Robert. Welcome to the High Desert Ranch and Homestead channel. If you're joining for the first time, welcome. If uh, you're returning, well, welcome too. Uh, I'm glad you're here because I, I do this for you guys. Um, this is my food for thought, uh, ramblings of a rancher. And uh, I kind of like this setup. I've got a few uh, emails from folks that they wonder why I do this in the my truck and honestly this is usually the time I have to uh, contemplate and reflect it's just uh, well after 1030 and dropped off a load of hay to them them steers and yeah and it's a uh, it's after long hard days like this and it's been cold and windy and not snowy that's here in a couple days but uh, I just I think about things and it's been a while since I've done one of these, and the things I'm going to tell you, you probably already heard. In fact, if you haven't, then, um, well, this will be news to you. But uh, I try and take some of the things in these that you hear in current events and make it, how does it apply to me? You know, if you, if you can't make it apply, then it it's, doesn't do you any good to, to stress about it or to get caught up in the hype, um, especially on social media, besides YouTube, right? Besides my channel. Uh, so anyways, this is, a, I just want to go over a few things really quickly. I try and keep these under 10 minutes, but you know me, I'm long winded. So, um, and just how, how it all intertwines, because like the quote that you just saw, um, is it too late? Mm, it could be if you're looking at uh, voting as far as political elections or something of that nature, or it could be that um, you votes in other ways with your dollars with your feet and uh, i think that's a truly important thing that's what really when you hit people's bottom line that's really what um, matters most and so a lot of these things are me hitting people's bottom line that's what is it you're going to do about it and that's why i love in the comments section below uh, is where people can talk and respectively and um, be able to share ideas uh, and just give that support that we all need because we're not alone um, and that's what I love about this is when I see all the views that tells me that I'm not the only one that you know as a working man that I'm not uh, by my alone in my thoughts and what I do and so <coughs> I've got uh, four things I want to cover so let's get to them right um, one is the and they're all intertwined is the you probably heard about the, the China coal shortage if you haven't um, that's a big deal because um, China is decreasing their manufacturing sectors by as much as 50 60 percent and we're already having supply chain problems um, and China uh, is having supply chain issues but now they're having manufacturing issues so we're not gonna be supply chain issues but if this trend continues where China doesn't have enough coal because Believe it or not, even though America and all these other industrialized nations are basically um, digging their own graves or uh, constructing their own noose as far as it comes to energy, uh, China, they have been doing, um, and this is several years ago, they're adding as much power as the entire UK power grid, and it's all been done with coal. And so, um, and I'll get into why China's having that problem with coal in just a few minutes, but something to keep in mind. They're decreasing it to the manufacturing sector, which is going to have huge implications as far as getting goods. You think it's hard, bad now? Just wait. Um, <clears throat> two is the natural gas and, and propane. Um, I'm just going to read you these stats because I can't remember them off the top of my head. Oil is um, at $75 per barrel, and that's the highest it's been since 2018. So you think you're paying high gas prices now? Um, I want to hearken you back to the days when it was over $100 a barrel. Right now in Utah, I'm paying, uh, Central Utah, I'm paying $378 for diesel. Uh, back in January, I was paying $318. So, um, yeah, it's already gone up a lot. And so, I expect the price of oil to go up even more, which is going to uh, turn to natural gas, um, and it's going to affect the propane, etc. Um, this is what's really interesting is the heating oil is at a 14, it's 14% um, below the five-year average. Uh, propane is 21% below the five-year average. 
um, and natural gas is 8% lower than the five-year average. So what does that all mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means <clears throat> is we're in October and all these things are some of the lowest they've been. So if you're basically going back to 2016, the beginning of the Trump administration, um, they're at the lowest they've ever been. And like it or not, like President Trump or not, the one thing he did was energy independence for this country, which we've completely reversed that from day one of this current administration. And we've seen nothing but just, yeah, what we're seeing now. And so these percentages, as you see, um, and experts and some people are saying this could be a very cold winter. And well, I can already tell you right now that um, this October here in central Utah is colder and wetter and now snowier than it's ever been. Um, it's been snowing all day up in the mountains, which it is October the 9th. Um, and we had one of the driest Octobers last year. So if this year is any indication of what it's going to be like, I think we are in for a very long, dark, and cold winter. And that's not just uh, literally, but there's going to be a lot of other things that might play into that. So looking at these percentages, how low they are, and if we have any sort of a cold winter, even just a normal winter, uh, people are going to feel the hit when it comes to these um, these crunches on heating oil, propane, especially if you're in rural areas like I am. Uh, a lot of people will depend on the propane. They've got the propane tanks outside their house. Um, well, get, get ready for uh, paying a lot more because propane, unlike natural gas, propane is a byproduct of uh, the refinery process for fuels. So if we're basically begging OPEC and um, get this fact, we're now importing more oil and natural gas from the Soviets. I call them the Soviets because they haven't changed and that's only getting worse. We're importing more from them than we ever have before. And now we're looking also to get possible natural gas from China. Chi the Chicoms, two of our, our biggest enemies, we're now getting, and including OPEC, so three, we're getting all of our energy basically um, from from these, um, these rascals. So um, what's interesting for that is with, um, and also natural gas, they, the, the futures, it's out of control in Europe. And again, Europe is basically uh, dug their own grave with their energy policies. And now they're suffering the consequences and they're having these cold, um, a colder uh, autumn. And China um, normally gets their coal from these other countries like the, e, like the EU and things like that. But now these countries are trying to say, uh, we need the coal. We can't ship it to you, China. And that's why China is now having to reduce their, um, possibly reduce their, their manufacturing sector. So as far as Europe is concerned, which I know how does that, I'll get to it. Europe is now saying we need to do the exact same thing as China. We need to, um, if things get really bad and really cold, we're going to need to decide, do we keep the, the, the factories online or do we um, divert that energy to uh, residential use? And if that's the case, there's going to be a lot of other manufacturing um, um, and factory shortages in uh, produced goods in Europe. And the U.S. is kind of following the same. We're lagging a little bit behind. But if that's the same case here, and especially with these percentages I just gave you, um, ring out to be true. And we don't have the, um, the Keystone Pipeline, even the Dakota Pipeline, which that didn't get a lot of press. But that was also suspended as well. And we kind of dodged a bullet. Um, because Canada has plenty of, of stuff they can give to us, but because of the no Keystone Pipeline, they can't supply us anything. So manufactured, I don't know. Um, and But as far as the Dakota Pipeline, that was one of those things too where um, we dodged the bullet, but when you think about it, we really didn't. There's a, a second one that we're not going to be able to dodge. And I had in one of my previous videos about the perfect storm, which I put out in March, I talked about how there could be a possible crisis with all the grains and all these farmers trying to figure out how to get their their harvest um, onto the rails. But because of the Dakota pipeline being canceled, oil is being forced onto the rails. Well, good news, but not really good. Bad news is the they didn't have that problem, the, the corn and wheat farmers. But why? It's because their uh, production was down because of the drought. We got, well, the that crazy freeze uh, in the late spring. But then also the combination of the drought completely decimated, or I shouldn't say decimated, but really greatly reduced those numbers. And the USDA is trying to hide and make it look all rosy and paint a, a rosy picture as far as um, harvest, but it's not. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll put a link uh, below where you can watch 
um, another video that I did where I was reading through some of those reports and it doesn't, and it's not good. And that's, so we're down this year from last year and last year's down from the year before and the year before that and the year before that. So you can see where we're going. We're getting to a point where, um, the, the outlook isn't very rosy. Uh, so there you have it. Um, oh, and to add to your woes, the, that hurricane Ida that they had in Louisiana, that was well over a month ago. And yet that um, it hit some of the refineries and those offshore um, like importing uh, seaports for the oil in the Gulf. That's almost 20 percent of the total oil use in the in the country for the U.S. And they're still recovering from that. So expect gas prices to go even higher than they already have, because is that stuff takes uh, months to get back online 100 um, percent. This graphic right here that I'm going to put <coughs> put up is the container ship traffic. We hear about, oh, container ship shortage. There's something going on, and I'm going to make a bold prediction. It's it's an attack from within. There is no excuse why there needs to be all these ships not only stacked up in our harbors, but all the amount of heavy inbound coming ships that can't be. So you just have to ask yourself, why? Is this orchestrated? Why, and we can see why, because it creates rationing, it increases the prices, it causes that panic inducing fear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and all this combination too, and I look at it from my point of view and um, from, from an agricultural point of view, all these things, it's all about inputs. If input costs get too much, you can't stay in business as a rancher or farmer or someone who's in agriculture. And all these things, it's just slowly amounting to, to more and more um, higher input costs. And these factories are shutting down in China and Europe. And you're going to start seeing it here in America, especially if we have a, a, a heavy winter. Um, fertilizer costs are going to start going up. All these input costs are going to start going up. And that's going to translate to come next year, um, farmers and ranchers having to make these hard decisions as far as what they are going to do. Um, so... Just something, to, just something to consider. I am praying for an awesome winter because we need it. We got, we've been hammered with the drought for basically the last two, 20 years, but in the last two years, it's increased substantially. So it was bad before, but it's really gotten bad. So, um, but at the same time, as I look at these figures, I think, sheesh, I don't know if I want a, a cold, dark winter, a long winter, but, um, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You, you get what you get because if, Especially around here, if there's not water, you don't grow things and you don't raise animals. So um, do what you can. Do the research for yourself now they've given you some food for thought. You go out, Google these things. Um, I will put uh, these topics in the description below so you can at least Google them. I apologize. I just, uh, there's sometimes I don't have even time to barely even put this kind of video together, let alone provide you all the links. But I'm sure you've heard about this stuff, but just something to consider. Um, and if not, go ahead and Google these things and um, check out some of these other videos that I put out too, the, the Food for Thought playlist. Um, it's good stuff. And as always, please um, like, subscribe, share with people, help wake people up to truly the, the thing that is coming down the pipeline. Oh, and one more thing is Augustin Farms. They're a huge supplier of food and uh, prepping supplies and just food like kitchen like everyday use or around the home they have put a moratorium on their shipping because they're out of supplies so if that doesn't wake you up to the situation that we're in i don't know what will but i never thought i'd see the day when august and farm says we're not uh, shipping for the next 60 days and i wouldn't be surprised if uh, similar places like honeyville announce the same thing so um, there you go drop a bomb right at the very end um, so please, uh, put some, your thoughts in the comments below, share what you're seeing. Again, uh, this is about us coming together to, to, um, spread the word and to help wake others up to the, to the awfulness of, of the situation that is uh, forming. So thanks for coming along. I'm glad I could be your ticket to help escape the ordinary, um, and here on the high desert ranch and homestead.